honestly more on a whim than anything, I decided I would try my hand at weathering my Bachman McKinley Explorer. I've had this model for a long time, but honestly it just kind of ended up sitting on my workbench, and seeing as the McKinley Explorer is the only, you know, real life engine that I've ever been on, I figured that I should do a little bit more with it. I started off with looking for some reference pictures, just namely some Alaskan diesel locomotives that followed the same colorway. Most pictures of Alaskan GP40s reveal that they're overall pretty clean locomotives. The Alaskan Railroad seems to visually keep them in pretty good shape, but personally I like my diesels to look a little bit more on the grungy side, so I tried to keep my focus on pictures that contained a little bit of both. Engines that were still clean, but had that, you know, dirty and used look. I also figured I would actually look up the Alaskan Railroad 3007, and um, it, it's this. They were just like, it says Alaska, it's close enough, I guess. Of course, the first step was to cover up the wheels of the locomotive on the bottom. I've never really tried my hand at weathering an American diesel locomotive before, so I just figured I would start with my roots and spray the locomotive with some matte clear. I find when you use weathering powders, that pre-coat honestly just kind of helps it stick more. At this point I decided to start weathering the side vents, and I would go pretty heavy with some black weathering powder. Oftentimes when I do vents I'll just use my fingers to wipe off the excess as I don't want it to cake up, but at the same time I want it to retain that dirty look. I would follow the same process on the other side, and while I don't want both vents to look exactly the same, I still did my best to make them have that same level of grunginess. After that I would weather right above the vents, as well as on the straight edges on the top of the locomotive as well as around it. I didn't want to take too much away from the dark blue and yellow of the locomotive, but at the same time add a little bit of realism and where I could, add a little bit of discoloration. Next I would start on the top vents of the locomotive. I would use my paintbrush to really try to work in that black weathering powder. I also would work the black weathering powder to the sides of the locomotive and you know outwards from the vent just to make it look like it had actually been in use. Of course for all four of them. Next I would focus on the back side vents of the locomotive, trying to do those basically how I did the front ones. With that done, it was time to work on the back part of the locomotive, and for this I would basically do again what I did on the front. I would go over the straight edges and in some areas discolor the yellow, but again tried to maintain it. I try to focus on the small details of the locomotive because the powder tends to help these pop more. Lastly, I would try to discolor the number of the locomotive as well as the side and just any remaining yellow and blue spots. And though it scared me, I would add a little bit of black weathering powder just to the trucks. After this I would use a more fine brush to apply brown weathering powder to the front of the locomotive, side of the locomotive, and the back of the locomotive. Again, I didn't want this engine to be too dirty, but at the same time I wanted to make it look like it had been in use, and of course dirt's gonna get kicked up from the track, and that's what I was trying to, well, replicate. It seems like the Alaskan Railroad goes to great measures to make sure that their locomotives are visually appealing, and I didn't want to compromise that. Truth be told, the entire time I really felt out of my comfort zone. I normally model steam locomotives, and for that, British ones, and this was definitely different than that. But my interests aren't just limited to British locomotives, and I wanted to, you know, try my hand at something a little different. With all of that, the locomotive was pretty much done. All I needed to do was to lock those powders in place, and to do so, I would go back to my Mac clear, adding the second coat. Overall, I'm happy with the end result of this model. There was more that I could have done, and there's more that I plan to do in the future. For example, adding more paint to the small details and making those pop a little bit more. But overall, I feel like I achieved my goal of making this locomotive look used, but overall maintaining that proper Alaskan Railroad look. It definitely was fun stepping out of my comfort zone and trying, you know, something a little different. I love all trains, especially American diesel locomotives, but they often take a backseat to British steam locomotives and, you know, other things like that. However, I figured it was time to do something a little bit different and more special with these models, seeing as I want to collect more of them. That, and I can't really work on Percy until the post brings me the parts for him, so thank you UPS. Oh, it's no rush, just take your time. I guess, it's cool, it's cool. That being said though, it is coming soon, it's just kind of stuck in the water at the moment, but I should have plenty for you guys here soon. Until then though, hopefully you guys like taking a closer look at and weathering the Bachman McKinley Explorer.